Welcome to another Auto Drive. I'm Karim Natush and today I'm reviewing the 2015 Toyota Alphard. Now it's hard to mistake this vehicle with a grill like this. Something that the Toyota designers decided that, you know what, we're just going to borrow the concept of the Crown and use it on the Alphard. It kind of looks like a Decepticon. The vehicle also has uh, this kit right here. And I think Toyota was wondering what type of identity should they give this vehicle and they said should we give it a sporty identity should we give it a stylish identity and they just said you know what we're going to give you the best of both and you decide now we're in the 2015 toyota alphard and this isn't a vehicle that you're going to see a lot in the western hemisphere it's a vehicle that's mostly popular in asia so you're not going to see much of them i mean this is it's in its third generation now and there aren't a lot of them on jamaican roads but you'll see a couple first generation ones now person might be wondering what does this vehicle compete with well this vehicle might compete with the honda odyssey it's what toyota likes to call an executive minivan so it has that type of feel in terms of with comfort and with options and if you look at the finishes all the finishes are basically leather and it also has uh, different options for your ac climate control something that i really like about it is that there's an option to control the ac in three ways one for the driver two for the front passenger and the third option is for the rear seat passengers now all of those persons have the option to control their their own climate basically with the ac something else that i like about this vehicle i mean the the steering feels very nice and very light very comfortable and the acceleration gets you up to 80 very easily but in a vehicle like this you're not worried about acceleration it's not about how fast you can drive in a vehicle like this it's about being comfortable persons might be wondering well who would this vehicle suit this vehicle for me would suit an executive somebody who has perhaps a bmw 7 series and decide that the sedan is too small for them and they want to upgrade to something that is larger but still have that nice premium feel this vehicle does give you that premium feel the cabin noise is very quiet for this vehicle you're not going to hear much of anything that is happening outside and that's excellent because when you're driving a vehicle like this you shouldn't be worried about the sound that is coming from outside you don't hear any of that sound it has a nice leather feel the steering is wrapped in leather and you see it throughout the vehicle as a constant theme so i like that design about it and if you look around the vehicle the visibility for the driver is actually very good you can see around you very easily now the vehicle comes with a tiptronic option where you can shift it over gear up or gear down at your leisure i while i appreciate the fact that it does have this feature i mean if you're driving a vehicle like this you're not thinking about speed and controlling the gears and anything like that you're just putting it in drive and you just want the vehicle to drive for persons who are switching from a sedan for example if you're a driver switching from a sedan you have to remember that any vehicle that weighs over four thousand pounds which this vehicle does you're not just going to get it to come to an immediate halt so you have to basically recalibrate your driving habits and know that you can't just press on the brake and expect it to just stop like that you have to do a lot of predictive braking with vehicles like this they're not sport vehicles they aren't meant to drive fast keep that in mind also there is no reverse camera on this level for this model and this is perhaps the second tier level but there are sensors for it so if you're backing up you'll definitely have the warning from a sensor the good thing is that the side mirrors are very large and the back of this vehicle doesn't protrude so if you use your spatial thinking whatever you're seeing in the back you can basically guesstimate how close you are to that object when you are reversing Toyota doesn't hold back with this vehicle so it's not just for the passengers to feel like they're in a luxury vehicle it's also for the driver and the front seat passenger so if you look at the finish here you notice that there are about three tones here there's this basic leather type tone right here there's a wood grain there's a metallic tone so it has that feeling of being very exclusive very premium even from the driver's perspective the steering has a good feel to it as i said earlier it feels light so it's very easy to manage and maneuver 
all right so this is what part of the center console look like and there's also a wood grain finish here um, you have your electric parking right up here and across here you have all the controls for your temperature now this vehicle comes equipped with dual climate control which means that you can set a different temperature for the driver and a different temperature for the passenger all you have to do is just control these knobs and this can control what temperature you want and this will control your fan speed right here now what is also great is that there's an option to control the rear temperature as well so you basically have three different temperature control you can control the driver the front passenger and the rear passengers as well the biggest issue with Japanese imported vehicles is that it always comes in the native language now I don't know what any of this stands for and I'm going to try and use Google Translate to find a setting to change it to English so at the end of this video I'll tell you if I was successful the main controls for the side doors are all located at the ceiling of the vehicle so if you look up here you can control both side doors they have dedicated keys that you basically use also the control for the sunroof is right here and the interior light which most vehicles have right here as well so anything that you want to control as it pertains to retracting the sunroof this is the feature right here and this front sunroof is a manual one the compartments of this vehicle kind of feel similar to that of a crown which is Toyota highest end sedan um, if you look at the wood grain finish here it feels very nice and the mechanism is very smooth so it moves very smooth here you have a little compartment you can put your phone in it you can put your wallet in it you press it up and it gently slides down there are multiple compartments for space and you have your two cup holders right here then you can basically retract this right here and you have this very deep compartment now this compartment can have a lot of things in it because it has a lot of space it goes all the way down to the base of the vehicle there's a concealed compartment here and it's very deep as in you can just drop something down in it um, it's, it's something that perhaps not going to have a lot of girth but can have a lot of depth so anything that fits that type of description you can easily put in there the glove compartment you press this button right here and it comes down now I wish the glove compartment was a little bit bigger but I mean this will suffice but you know I always look at a glove compartment as somebody like a female being able to put a handbag in it there is a cup holder right here that basically just slides out and it has two reinforcing uh, options here to ensure that whatever you're holding doesn't tilt over I mean as long as that thing isn't too long but as long as it's an average height it should be okay all right on this side you have the option for a cup holder as well and it's right there it's, it's basically concealed press back this button and your wood grain cover comes over it you have your steering mounted controls for Bluetooth and answering your phone and hanging up your phone and your volume and different options like that so it's typical steering mounted controls that you're accustomed to now the control for the windows and for the door locks are right here however if you want to open the rear passenger doors those options are actually at the ceiling of the vehicle so you can't control it from here you just control your basic window and your mirror functions here now these seats have bolsters to the side and there are bolsters on the base of it a good thing I must mention about these seats is that they're very wide so if you're a big body type person you won't feel uncomfortable a lot of seats now are coming very narrow uh, you're not going to be sliding um, to the side and feel like you're falling over in these seats because the bolsters are going to keep you in place there's an armrest that you can basically bring down and you bring up back whatever fits your comfort now a good thing about this seat is that it can be retracted to an almost flat position so you can see yourself falling asleep in a vehicle like this to open this passenger door all you have to do is pull this right here and it does the rest for you now to close it you simply pull this back again and it closes automatically for you now some persons might be wondering what is this for 
Well, this button basically does the same thing right here. Now, in the higher end model, this button is actually a sensor. And once you have your key on you, it senses it and it will open it automatically once you walk towards it. When you're in a vehicle like this, it's not about driving the vehicle. It's really about the interior of the vehicle and how the interior of the vehicle feels. Right, so let's look at the second row of seats. Now for the second row of seats, there are armrests on both sides that can be adjusted. One armrest here and another armrest here. What is great about a vehicle like this is that you really get that executive type feeling and you have a footrest here. Now each time you press this, it adjusts a little bit and you press it and it adjusts a little bit more and you press it and it adjusts a little bit more and it continues like that. From here you can basically push your seat to a position that you're comfortable with and you can recline it to suit your comfort. So in a vehicle like this there is no excuse for not being comfortable. What's good about this vehicle is that you can wind down the window from here. You have your speaker right here. There is a cup holder right here. There's a speaker, another speaker that is right here as well. So there's no compromise in terms of sound or quality. And to open the door, all you do, you push this back one time and the door does the rest for you. To close the door, it's the same thing. You push it in the opposite direction one time and the door also closes for you. For this rough seat, there's an option to bring up this tray right here which has additional cup holders and just a little space to rest something right here. Now, in the executive model for this vehicle, and it has different levels, and this is probably a mid-level, so in the high-end level, this would be basically a laptop tray that basically comes out of the side of the seat and retracts and contorts and make sure that you can basically do your work if you are on the go. So, we're going to just tilt this back down and let me just figure out where to put this to tilt this back okay good so the control to tilt this is right here and you just press this right here and you tilt it another great option is that this vehicle has a power socket now a lot of persons might not have usb charging and they just have the traditional socket where they want to use and just plug in something to charge a phone to charge a laptop to do anything that you know you normally do when you're at your home there's also an option for mood light setting which basically is going to be seen by the rear passengers and you can switch the colors meaning that you can dim them so this is a brightness and this controls the color now we're going to purple i guess that's another side that's lavender i don't know men are not necessarily good with colors that's blue that's light blue and that's green so you have multiple options in terms of colors for the ambient light rear seat passengers have this digital layout of the temperature and they can also control their own temperature which would be separate from the temperature of the driver and the temperature of the front passenger so you can basically adjust your temperature right here you can put it to auto you can also adjust your fan speed so they give you the option to do all these things. You can tell where you want the AC to be, if you want it to be at your foot, or if you want it to be at your foot and your upper body. The visor for the sunroof is a manual one, so you're gonna to have to push this back manually. However, if you want to open the sunroof, you have an access point right here to open the sunroof, and the driver or the front seat passenger also have the option with their buttons to open the sunroof. So we're going to open the sunroof here and the good thing is that this is a very large sunroof so you can bring it all the way back and an adult can go through it as you can notice the sunroof is large enough for any adult to basically fit through it all right i'm in the last row of the vehicle now and these guys don't change the quality no matter what row you're in a lot of persons when you're in minivan you can always think that they just cram up a last row just to say well we have a last row it doesn't feel the same way like the other rows it always feels a little bit smaller it always feels a little bit clunky well these are proper third rows 
So if you look, you have your armrest option. Just like the second row, you have an adequate headrest for the, the person who is sitting in the middle. You have the option also to recline these seats. So these seats can also be reclined. And that's an excellent option because even the person who is sitting in the third row, that person won't have to make a compromise for comfort. These were some nifty things that I saw on the floor of this vehicle. Now what these things actually do is that if you're sitting at the back and you don't want this person right here to constantly be pushing back their seat, you can literally put this in the center of it which can stop this seat from going beyond a certain point. Another good option is that the third row passengers, they have their own dedicated AC vents and they have a light around here. So you're always going to feel cool in this vehicle. When you're in our climate, I mean, it's always about trying to feel cool and be comfortable at the same time, which can always be a tricky task. Now, there is one cup holder on this side for this person and there are two cup holders on that side. So for the middle person who is sitting right here, this person would use the cup holder on this side. Now we're going to look at the rear of the vehicle. Now, I wish that this rear trunk door was basically automatic like the side doors. So you have to search for your button, you press it, the vehicle opens and then you lift it up. It must be also noted that this door is a little bit on the heavy side. One of the compromises that you're going to make with all this luxury space is the fact that there's basically no trunk space right here. So if you're traveling with a large family, I think you might have to put some of the suitcase at the front of the vehicle. We're looking at, this vehicle is a six, seven seater, depending on if you really want to squeeze somebody else in it. But as you notice, there is no space right here. So somebody's going to have to make some compromise on this trip. Or the only way you're going to basically get storage in this vehicle is if you only have four passengers and in that case you can fold down these seats. Now persons who have the Prada are already accustomed to this mechanism but if you're not accustomed this is basically how you do it. You look for these options right here and you fold down the back of the seat. There's a white marker which is at the base of the seat right here and there's another white marker which is at the base of the vehicle which you can't see. But what you have to do, you have to line up both markers. And once they're in line, you press this number two button right here and you fold up the seats. Now there's this nice concealed thing to the side right here which you basically just click this in place. This isn't something new, I mean, you would have seen this also in the Prado. So, for those persons who have a Prado, I mean, they would have already seen this option. So I'm going to go ahead and do this for the next seat. Now we're looking at the base of the vehicle and we're going to look at what are the storage here. There's a little compartment right here. I don't know necessarily what it has. Traditionally Toyota likes to put their lug tools to the side over here so I don't know necessarily what you would put in there. However there's a deep space right here that you can hold. Well this is perhaps where you would hold some of your luggage. I don't know if this can hold any large suitcase, but I mean, it, it can definitely hold a side piece bag. And there's another space over here, which can't hold anything because it has a spare tire in here. Now, this tire is not necessarily as small as a donut, but it's not as big as the tires that are currently on the vehicle. Nonetheless, it's a good spare tire to have. I've been fiddling with this for most of the time for this review and unfortunately I can't find the button to translate this to English which is very sad because there are a lot of options right here and I wish I, that I could have gone into all these options but hopefully when the next model come I can look at the options and tell you guys exactly what it can do. That's our review of the 2015 Toyota Alphard. 
Remember, you can check out more of our reviews by typing AutoDrive in the search window of our YouTube page.